Hi everybody, if you're wondering why we were freaking out in that video clip, it's because that's the first time we ever heard Beethoven's famous Moonlight Sonata played in negative harmony and it sounds really amazing in a, in a kind of surprising way. In this video I'm going to show you a sneak preview of some brand new software I wrote which opens a door into that whole new sound world. That's sick. Uh, you can hear more of that piece and others later on in this video. But what is negative harmony anyway? Well, the concept has been around for quite a few decades, uh, but it kind of went viral last year thanks to videos like this one of June Lee interviewing Jacob Collier. I saw the post of you discussing negative harmony with Herbie Hancock. Yeah. So what is that? Oh, s***. Um. <laughs> <laughs> there are actually quite a few great videos like that one which explain the theory behind negative harmony, so I'm not going to repeat those explanations here. But one quick and easy way to understand it is to think of it like the musical equivalent of taking the negative of a photo. So light colors become dark and dark colors become light. But what does that actually sound like? So let's start off with the piano intro to Imagine by John Lennon. Now we just click this bypass button and play the same music again. Okay, so maybe that's not the most earth-shattering example in the world, but at least it shows you how easy it is to hear the negative harmony version of any piece of music just by playing it. You might have noticed that when a melody goes up in the original, the negative version goes down and vice versa. This is even more obvious if I just play a simple chromatic scale. You've probably also spotted the way the software is visualizing what's going on. It looks a bit like the uh, traditional kind of MIDI piano roll that you might see in Logic or Ableton, but it has a little twist in that notes bubble up in the middle and then flow away to the sides like a little volcano. The left hand side always shows what keys were pressed, and if we click the bypass button again to enable negative harmony, now the right hand side will show the altered negative pitches you're actually hearing. As I showed before, negative harmony makes a melody move up if the original was moving down and vice versa. But this creates a potential problem where if a melody keeps going in one direction, the negative version will get further and further away from its original register. So what was a high voice in the original could end up going really low, or what was a low voice in the original could end up going really high. And of course that wouldn't sound great. So I invented an algorithm which occasionally makes voices jump up or down by octaves to keep them close to their original register, but at the same time it tries to preserve the smooth shape of melodies as much as possible. It's a pretty complex piece of code and I'll save the explanation for a later video, uh, so subscribe to this channel if you want to watch out for that. Man, this is so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> like Moonlight or something. Oh yeah, nice. Have you tried that yet? No, I haven't. That's a great one. Too. <laughs> Moonlight Sonata, negative harmony. So every piece of software needs a name and I chose the name for this one based on an in-joke that maybe only jazz nerds like myself will find funny. It comes from Jacob Collier's idea that you can build the brightest possible multi-octave scale by going up by fifths around the circle of fifths. And he calls that scale the super, ultra, hyper, mega, meta, lydian scale. So if you apply the same principle but moving the opposite way around the circle in fourths, you get the darkest possible scale. Mm -hmm. 
So my software is called the Sub Hypo Infra Micro Anti Negator, or Shiminator for short. I wrote it because I wanted to be able to take any piece of music and instantly convert it into negative harmony, not just to satisfy my own curiosity, but also because of the fresh sounds and approaches to composition and improvisation which that opens up. Here's a quick example of that. And you can also have them both, the original, uh, at the same time. That's sick. So I hope you found that quick introduction to the Shiminator interesting. I'd love to hear what you think, um, if you can imagine any uses uh, for the software which you'd be particularly interested in. Maybe I haven't thought of uh, everything that it, it could be used for so far. Um, if you want to keep posted on all this stuff, then please subscribe to my channel, uh, post in the comments below. Um, you can also follow the link to sign up to my mailing list uh, where maybe I'll do a beta program for the software uh, for early adopters who are particularly interested. Um, but I, I can post updates there and uh, generally just yeah, watch this space um, because uh, there's definitely more coming on this front. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.